Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we have a Portuguese model of 1886 Troopers revolver to take a look at. Now, this is an Abadie pattern revolver, which is cool, and that's a mechanical feature we'll take a look at in a moment. But first, the backstory on where this came from. So, Portugal, uh, in 1878, decided to adopt a new revolver for an officer's sidearm, and they chose a Belgian-manufactured Abadie pattern, uh, model of 1878 revolver. This was double action, solid frame, an Abadie loading gate, which like I said we'll get to, and worked pretty darn well. It was chambered for a proprietary 9.1 by 17 millimeter cartridge, which was pretty anemic. Um, it fired a 129 grain bullet at about 530 feet per second, so a relatively light bullet also going pretty darn slow. Uh, for comparison, the British would use like the early Webley loadings, which are still considered kind of weak today, were like twice as heavy of a bullet traveling even faster than this. So really a pretty wimpy thing. However, the revolvers themselves proved to be durable, reliable, they were well liked, they were relatively compact, and by 1886 the Portuguese decided that they wanted to expand the use of the, these revolvers. So uh, what they wanted to do was, was go from this just being like the secondary sidearm of an officer to actually being more of a primary weapon for troops whose duties were perhaps not directly related to, um, you know, to fighting with a firearm. So guys like artillery and some of the cavalry and in some cases uh, non-commissioned officers, sergeants. Instead of carrying around a rifle or a carbine, especially for the artillery guys, it made more sense to give them a their primary weapon, their primary firearm would be a revolver. So uh, when they made this decision, they wanted, this was going from a secondary gun to a primary, and so they wanted a little more capability out of it. So they actually extended the barrel out. These have about a 5.6 inch barrel, which is a little over an inch longer than the original 1878 officer's revolvers. Normally it kind of goes the other way, like they start with the big ones and then they realize oh, we don't really need a big revolver and they make things smaller. In this case they went the opposite direction because they were looking to actually make them into more effective combat weapons rather than just sidearms. So uh, let me show you the Abadie system here. The disassembly on this is really slick and uh, you can see all inside it. This is basically a Nagant action with an Abadie loading gate. Uh, we'll start with the loading gate. You may be familiar with this already, but the idea is you have a fixed frame, and when you open the loading gate, the cylinder can rotate freely. You can then open up your ejector rod and punch out individual cases. There we go. So, like so. And that's fine, except, you know, as you can see here, you have to take you have to get the, the cylinders lined up correctly uh, to eject the empty cartridges. Well, the idea of the Abadie is when this is opened, it actually disconnects the hammer. So I can use the trigger to cycle the cylinder, and it will index it exactly correctly to eject empty cases. So I can kick out all six like that, and I can lock the ejector lever back in place there. And then I can load around, pull the trigger, load around, pull the trigger, etc. six times. Once you uh, close the loading gate, then the hammer is re-engaged. This is double action, like I said, so you can cock it manually or not. Barrel length on this is about 5.6 inches, 142 millimeters, uh, which is longer than the officer's version, which is kind of cool. I honestly think this is a, a pretty handy, nicely balanced, I think a pretty good looking revolver. Now, uh, the interesting elements continue. There are no tools required to disassemble this. So what you do is actually pull the trigger guard back. There we go, and you can see it pops down a little bit. And when I pull the trigger guard down, it actually cams the side plate up. The trigger guard itself is what locks the side plate into the gun. So I can pull that off without any screws or anything and I now have complete access to the lock work. If I open up the loading gate, you can very nicely see exactly what happens, uh, how this works mechanically. So there's a little cam right there that is connected to 
the loading gate. And when the loading gate is closed, you have this spring-loaded foot right there. And when I pull the trigger, the trigger here is going to push on that, which is going to push the hammer back. When I open the loading gate, that little foot is pushed back in against the hammer so that the trigger no longer engages with the hammer. So really it's a fairly simple system, but a very clever adaptation that allows you to dramatically speed up the loading and unloading process. Now, I did say there were no screws. You may notice there's that one. Uh, there is actually a screw on. Well, you can't quite see it. Eh, there it is. The screw on the loading rod uh, or ejector rod. The way that you can actually take those out is to open up the ejector lever and then push this pin or this uh, latch up. That allows us, that pushes that latch up. We can then take the cylinder out. The cylinder access pin comes out and it actually has the screwdriver blade built into the end of it. So if you need to take the grip panels off right there, or pull that out, if you need to take out the ejector rod, the screwdriver to do so is built right into the revolver. Um, cylinder is six shots, nine by 17 millimeter rimmed. Um, nothing particularly unusual about the cylinder here. Uh, you can see that it has Belgian proof marks on it. If we look at the gun up close, you will see El Soleil et Fi, uh, Leon Soleil and Sons of Liège. They are the contractor that, that won the contract to manufacture the 1886 pattern guns for uh, Portugal. We have a serial number and a pair of Belgian proofs on the barrel there. This crown over FA is a Portuguese military acceptance mark. And then on the side plate, we have System Abadie Brevet, or patented. And Soleil Fi had the license to manufacture Abadie pattern guns in Belgium at the time. The best data that I've been able to find on production quantity of these is from Edward Ezel, who says 3,500 of them. Uh, that kind of fits with the serial number ranges that I've seen, so I'll go with that until I find something better. Uh, the cartridge was actually modified a couple times. So it started out as 129 grain bullet at about 530 feet per second. That would get bumped up uh, to 580 feet per second. And then in 1891, it got bumped up again to 640 feet per second, which is like, that's like a 20% increase from the original, but it's still a relatively low powered cartridge by modern standards. This was a black powder cartridge the whole time, so they, they never did adapt this over to smokeless powder, as far as I can tell. Um, by the beginning of the 1900s, the Portuguese were starting to look at self-loading pistols, which would replace these, so they adapted, adopted the Savage model of 1907, as well as the Luger. And so you'll see both of those in Portuguese service, basically replacing both the 1878 officer's revolvers and the 1886 trooper pattern revolvers. So uh, these are really pretty scarce to find today, so I thought it was really cool to have a chance to show you guys this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.